Hi, I'm Ms. Hearn. Let's get started. In this video, we're going to talk about Adam's method of apportionment. And if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. That'll help other students to find the video. So Adam's method of apportionment, like all apportionment methods, starts by finding the standard divisor. So in our example, we have to apportion 25 seats to states with populations of 53, 201, 808, 917, and 1993. The standard divisor is the total population, so the sum of the state's populations, which is 3,972, divided by the house size, which is the number of seats, in this case, 25. So for step one, we have to divide 3,972 by the number of seats, which is 25, and that's going to give us a standard divisor of 158.88. What this represents is the number of people in uh, the population who are served by one representative, one seat. So for each 158.88 people, there's one representative in the legislature or parliament or whatever the case may be. So that's step one. Step two is to take each state's population and divide it by this number to get what's called the state's standard quota. So I'm gonna divide all of these populations by 158.88. 53 divided by 158.88 is going to give us a standard quota of 0.33. 201 divided by 158.88 is 1.2651. So what this means is that state A, in a fair situation, would get a third of a representative approximately. State B would get about one and a quarter representative. I'm gonna go ahead and finish the list, finishing off step two. And you'll notice that if you add up all the standard quotas, you get approximately 25, which is what you sh should get because we're dividing up those 25 seats among the states. The only problem is, is we can't actually give a state a third of a representative. And that's where these apportionment methods come in. So the way that Adams deals with these extra pieces of representatives is to give each state their upper quota. So what's the upper quota? You basically take each standard quota and round up to the next whole number. So for example, 0.3336 is less than the number one. 1.2651 is just below the number two and so on. So notice we're not using traditional rounding here. We are always rounding up regardless of how small the decimal part is. And then we're going to add up these upper quotas and see how many seats that would take to give everybody their upper quota. So this is gonna be one and two is three and six is nine and six is 15 and 13 is 28. So if we gave everybody their upper quota, then we would have to hand out 28 seats. And of course, that's too big. So we're going to adjust the divisor. The divisor was 158.88, the number we divided by. We're going to adjust it up, make it bigger. So when we divide by it, we get a smaller upper quota. And I'm gonna have to possibly do this a few times. There's no formula for finding a modified divisor that works. So we have to do guess and check. So I'm gonna always keep a list of what I've tried. So I tried 158.88, the standard divisor, and that gave me 28 seats, which was too big. So that means that I need to increase my divisor in order that when I divide by it, I get a smaller value. So for example, I might try dividing all of these state populations by 200 instead of 158.88. So 53 divided by 200 is going to give me 0.265. 201 divided by 200 is 1.005 and so on. So I have completed my second round of step two, dividing by the divisor, this time a modified divisor. And now I'm moving on to step three. I'm going to list the upper quotas again. So that's gonna be one and two and five and five and 10. 
Now if I add up my modified upper quotas, I get one and two is three, and five is eight, and five is 13, and 10 is 23, which unfortunately is too low. So I'm gonna make a note of that. That was too low. So I have to decrease the divisor in order to get a larger result, but I don't wanna decrease it too far. I know that 158.88 was too small of a divisor. 200 is too big. So I need something in between. Now you may have to go back and forth a few times to figure out what the divisor actually is. I might guess 180 and then find that that's too small and then guess 185 and find that's too big and keep going and keep going. And to save time, I happen to know that 183 is a good thing to guess. So I'm gonna guess that next. Now, I don't have a lot of room on my table, so I'm gonna go ahead and erase what I did for uh, the divisor of 200 and fill in these two columns again. So dividing 53 by 183 gives us 0 0.2896. 201 divided by 183 is 1.0984 and so on. So I've completed step two again and now back to step three, we're gonna list the upper quotas. So we have one, two, five, six, and 11 are the whole numbers that are just bigger than these decimal numbers. We're going to add up, these are now the modified upper quotas. We also in step three have to find their sum. So we're gonna add up one and two is three and five is eight and six is 14 and 11 is, guess what, 25. So 25, which is just right. Now there are different divisors that someone might have guessed that might have also resulted in 25. Maybe, I'm not sure, maybe 182 works, I don't know. But the important thing is just that we will always get the same final apportionment if we use this procedure. So our final apportionment is one, two, five, six, and 11. You can also check your work on my website, MissHernMath.com. I have an Adams method calculator. You enter the populations and you enter the house size and it's going to give you the standard divisor of 158.88. So if you enter that standard divisor in the bottom box, it will tell you that that would apportion 28 seats, which is too high, so you should increase your divisor. And then if you enter, say, 200, it says 23 seats, too low, decrease your divisor. If you then say, okay, I need something between 158.88 and 200, I'll try 180, it says too high, increase. I'm going to go up to 183 and you see it says 25 just right. Apportionment is complete. 1, 2, 5, 6, and 11, which is the same final apportionment that we got by hand. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. That will help other students to find the video. And check out my other videos on Hamilton's, Jefferson's, and Webster's methods of apportionment.